Hello and welcome back to my channel Zero to Siva. So we are still in day three. So now what we are going to do is we are going to discuss about various event processing models. There are a lot of event processing models. In this lecture, I'm going to discuss about sequential processing model, parallel processing model, asynchronous processing model. You will clearly understand based on the scenario which processing model to use. I have discussed everything with examples. So let us get started. I will tell you about a scenario. Assume that I have a database where I have a table. I'm storing product. Uh, product information is product table. And I have a SOAP web service where from where we can actually get products or add products or delete products. So for product management, there is a SOAP service, product management SOAP service. And also I have a database where I'm maintaining the products. Now I have a flow. I'm going to design a flow where I will take a HTTP request. When our HTTP request comes, um, I'm expecting data like product ID, brand, price, etc. from the request. Using that data, I'm going to do some transformation where I will transform the data to say XML or JSON. Then I want to uh, update in the database. So actually, if the product ID is already existing in the database, I want to fire an update query okay if the product is uh, not in database i want to insert okay so for now forget about update i want to do insertion only right now okay i don't want to insert duplicate data. So first what I would do is I have to check if product exists. Assume that I have written a separate flow to check if product is existing okay then i want to actually insert this can throw an error if the product is existing then uh I want to do some transformation so that I can invoke the SOAP web service. And then I want to invoke using a web service consumer. I want to invoke this SOAP web service. Once I get the response, I want to use a transformer to set the response and give the response. Okay, so this is my use case. Suppose if I am an architect and if I'm designing, if, 
if I'm artic, if I'm designing a solution like this, is there any problem which you can see? Is it good in performance? This is actually sequential processing. We are processing the event sequentially, one after the other. So first we are inserting into database. These are the two steps to do insertion into database. And then we are inserting into SOAP. Then the response actually what are we are setting? Uh, it is from this transformer only. We are not actually setting the response based on the output of database or this one. So it will take more time, is it? Sequential processing will take more time. So for one record to get processed, it will take more time. So we can go for parallel processing. What are the options for parallel processing? What I can do again, I can modify my flow to use. This is a HTTP component transformer. Then I'll use scatter gather with two routes. One route which has components to write to database, another route which has components to write to SOAP web service. So when you have tasks which are independent, you can actually do parallel processing using scatter and gather. <coughs> So what happens is if you are using scatter and gather, whenever a request comes, a thread which executes scatter and gather will create two copies of mule message and will start two threads to execute two routes. This thread will wait until both threads complete the processing and then we'll get the response, right? So parallel processing is achieved. But the problem is, um, let's assume that this takes two seconds and this takes four seconds. Now tell me approximately how much time the scatter gather, the, the main thread will wait for responses, how much time? Exactly, very nice, four seconds. It will wait for all the threads to join four seconds. So anyways, um, assume that uh, these two are not related to each other, right? Anyways, we understood. Why can't we process this flow asynchronously invoking uh, invoking this asynchronously, that could give us better result. So we will go with asynchronous processing strategy. For processing asynchronously, what all options are available in Mule? Again, a HTTP here I have, transformer I have, and then 
whatever I want to uh, insert to database, then uh, what I want is the SOAP related things. I can wrap this inside something called as async scope. So what will happen in case of async scope when a request comes here? Uh, when the control comes to async scope, a separate thread will execute this, whatever is present in the async scope. We will not even wait for response. Let me show you through code all these strategies. Then we will see the performance, how we can increase the performance. So here I have some common flows. Okay. First of all, uh, let me show you the main flow. This is the main flow for sequential processing first. Okay. So the listener is listening at add products sequential. I'm expecting data from HTTP request using that. I'm creating a transform message. Transform message is creating a product. Actually, I have a database table product. Let me truncate it. Okay, if I see there are no rows in product, my product table is containing product ID, brand name, description, name, offer price, offer valid until original price. These are the columns. Now, what I am expecting is, I'm expecting the product details like product ID, brand, price from query parameters and I'm constructing this product object. I have hard coded the description. And to make it simple, I have, I'm using brand name itself as a name also. Price only also as offer price. Okay, don't worry, to make it simple. So here I am transforming, I'm creating a product object, product object. Then here I have a flow, check if exists. Right, go to reference flow. Here I have this in uh, another file, commons, common flows.xml. So I have a choice. What is it doing? First of all, see this one. This transform message is storing this output of transformation in a variable product. The output of this transformation will be stored in product variable. Then I'm calling check if product exists. So what I'm doing, if product ID is not null, okay, I am firing a query in database. Select star from product where product ID equals to the given product ID. If there are rows, what will happen? This select query will return more than one row if the product is existing. So what I am doing here in advanced, I'm creating a target variable product exists. 
checking the size of the product. If it is greater than zero, this will be true, right? It is false. And if the product ID is not there, it will come to default where I am actually configuring product exists as false. So simple, uh, here, this will check if product is existing. And here I have one more flow, upset a product. Let me go to the flow. Here it is. In the choice, I'm checking if product is existing, if product exists equals to false, I am inserting. Okay. Yes, I am updating based on the product ID. And these loggers are just saying inserted, updated. Okay. And now, here I want to simulate a delay. If you know, there is a function called as wait in runtime module where this wait function will return whatever first argument I have given that will be logged. But after waiting for 2000 milliseconds, that means I am simulating a delay of two seconds in this flow. Okay, after inserting, I'm adding a delay of two seconds. Okay. Then I have a transform message component, which is trans, which is creating an XML required for invoking my SOAP web service. Here I have a flow reference where I'm having a logic consume a SOAP web service. Right. And here I'm adding a delay logger. I'm adding and I'm adding a delay of four seconds. Okay. So don't worry. What is this SOAP web service? I have a SOAP web service which I'm going to start. Assume that, just understand the concept. I'm starting this SOAP web service. I have local. Okay. Now, this is sequential processing. So once I get a request, I'm creating a product object, checking if product exists in database and then calling a flow, which will do upset. If the product is existing, it will do update. If the product is not existing, it will do insert. Then doing transformation and invoking SOAP service. Here I'm doing sequential processing. And I have inserted a delay in absurd product. I have added a delay of two seconds. And in this soap flow, I added a delay of four seconds. Totally six seconds delay I introduced. Let me run this first. This is sequential processing strategy. When to use sequential processing strategy actually? When first component, this, comp this component is dependent on previous one, this component is dependent on previous one. So if you want everything to be executed step by step sequentially, then only you should go for sequential processing. This component is dependent on this one. 
or this one. Then only we can go with sequential processing. So I'll go to Postman and here I have already written. Yeah, I'm calling add product sequential. Is this the one? Add product sequential. And I'm passing the data, whatever is required. Let us see how much time it will take. I'm inserting a product with ID 2, ID 1. It should take for the first time, the database connections and all will take more time. You can see it took nine seconds. Actually, I introduced a delay of four plus two, six seconds. It has taken another three more seconds. Now I'll try to check in database. Is there a product added? Yes. And on the SOAP web service here on the console, you can see that add product is called. That means I assume that the SOAP call went. I will try to add one more product with ID2. How much time earlier it took? 9.06 seconds. Now the time is 7.37 seconds, 3.9. Actually for the first time, once you give a request, it may take a bit more time because maybe the connections have to be initialized on database, etc. And now I got almost two seconds less. Now I'll again give a third request with ID3. Almost I'm getting seven seconds. So six seconds delay I have introduced anywhere. This is a sequential processing. Not good, right? In this case, I know that this SOAP, these are two related components related to SOAP processing. And these are related to database. These two are unrelated tasks and we can execute them parallelly. Let us see how to actually do parallel processing. Here I have one more XML where I'm using a listener with add product parallel, same transform message. Now scatter gather I'm using and I have two rounds. This is the components which are related to database and these are the components related to SOAP. And here I am setting a payload. Uh, what is this payload? Here it is just displaying product with ID. Where's dot product dot product ID is inserted. So do you think this set payload is dependent on the outcome of whatever is coming from scatter gather? No. Really? But now if I run this, let us see how much time it takes. Oh. So in the database flow, I have two seconds delay and here I have seconds delay. Okay, fine. Now I'll give a request to parallel. I'll give ID as 11. This I have already <laughs> in my postman, I have already set it so that I can save time. Next, see how much time it will take for the first time. It took, oh, so request timed out. Actually, actually, the call came. Anyway, I can see four, right? Okay, I guess.
so request timed out why is it so earlier it was working same thing anyway maybe it is a problem yeah the previous one no. also has a timeout no oh, previous one also had a timeout right ah uh, <laughs> okay i guess some problem here Okay, I didn't recognize. Uh, so this is fine actually. The calls are going actually, but maybe okay. I'll try it again. Fine. The concept here is, I'll get uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Sixty, sixty. Okay, fine. The concept I want you to understand here is, I have done parallel processing. Again, I'll make one more request with ID 12. It took 4.18 seconds. Now it was okay. So, what is the maximum time taken? Four seconds. Here I introduced a delay of four seconds here. But I'm not happy. Anyways, this set payload, whatever is after scatter gather, is not dependent on this outcome. Why can't I execute it asynchronously? How to do asynchronous processing? Very simple. Here, in async, I have kept the SOAP in async. Assume that uh, maybe this component is dependent on database out, but not on SOAP out. Assume. Then what? I can wrap these two in async scope. In this case, I will get response in how many seconds? Two seconds, approximately little more than two seconds because absurd will take two seconds. And this is anyway executed by a separate thread. Right. So like that. But as an architect, there are challenges. What if whatever we kept inside async scope is throwing an error? Actually, a client gave us a request. We inserted to database and we are giving success response to the client saying that it was success. But as we are executing this asynchronously, there are chances that the web service might give an error. Maybe the web service is down. So web service is not reachable. The data didn't go to web service. So how do you handle that? Yeah, maybe we can so, use until successful. Exactly, until successful is one of the options. There are multiple options actually, which I'm going to discuss in a topic uh, where 
we'll discuss about reliability patterns. Here, I will have a good discussion on how to reliably process the data. In such cases or many other use cases I will take, we'll discuss about it. So you should be aware about a problem when you are actually using async scope you need to make sure that the data is processed reliably so whereas reliability patterns can be applied which we will discuss but whereas in scatter gather if there is any problem with the route we got an error so the client is getting an error message and the client is understood, okay, there is a problem. That is okay. But when we are using async scope, we have to apply some reliability patterns to make sure that the data is not lost. So we will discuss about all those things. So we are still discussing about uh, processing options. I just discussed about three things, sequential processing, parallel processing, async processing. Still, there are other processing patterns which we will discuss tomorrow. 